You're watching the award-winning GHS TV, a nationally recognized student television station. Welcome to Let's Talk Business. My name is Kelly Bolton, and I thank you so much for joining us today. Over the past 20 years on this program, we've spent a great deal of time talking with female entrepreneurs and civic leaders as they show their advice and guidance to the next generation of women in the workforce. In so many ways, our college years are where we often define our personal and professional goals. Whether that is through the class that we take or friends that we make, those critical years are defining. With us today is the executive director of an organization that I was part of in college that strives to prepare female leaders of the future. So please join me as we welcome Leslie Harrington to Let's Talk Business. Leslie, thanks for joining us. Oh my goodness, thanks for having me, Kelly. I am thrilled. I know that the uh, lady that I work with mm -hmm. told me that we were fortunate enough to get you on the show and I was thrilled because Chi Omega is near and dear to my heart. Um, back when the dinosaurs roamed, <laughs> I was part of Chi Omega. And um, so I thought it was really neat. And um, But a lot of our viewers may not know what Chi Omega is. So yeah. could we start out, Leslie, just by telling everybody about Chi Omega? Absolutely. So Chi Omega is the largest women's fraternal organization. We're a college sorority mm -hmm. in the world. We have 101, or excuse me, 181 collegiate chapters mm -hmm. and over 360,000 initiated members. And on the everyday college campus, we're just one of many women's organizations that a student can choose to join. And we typically look for women who are excited about being leaders on campus, being mm -hmm. involved, um, those that are academically focused, and also those that have a true appreciation for real friendship and the values of friendship. So uh, I will say that if you happen to be in Memphis and that if you are on Rhodes campus, we have a chapter right here on your campus. Oh, that's fabulous. Yeah. That's fabulous. Well, I can speak from, as I said, when the dinosaurs roamed, yeah. uh, my closest friends today are those that I made as part of the organization back when I graduated. I'm not even going to tell the viewers because they're probably thinking I'm just like in my late 20s and it would give away my age. Let's so. keep it to ourselves. Yeah. <laughs> but it was a few years ago. Yeah. But what a wonderful thing. I think a lot a lot of people probably are under the um, misperception yeah. that that fraternity, sorority, whatever people may refer to it as, is purely a social organization, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and it's really so much more than that. It is, yeah. Uh, we uh, have six purposes that Chi Omega lives by, and they include several things, but we also, in addition to being friends and focusing on friendship and social activity, uh, our chapters do philanthropic activity and they are involved and required to be involved in community service and activities on their campus as well. Oh, that's fabulous. Mm -hmm. Well, Chi Omega is actually located here in Memphis. That's right. In addition to uh, being on Rhodes campus here in Memphis, mm -hmm. their headquarters is here. Yes. And a lot of people probably don't recognize that. So can you tell me what it means to have a headquarters for an organization like Chi Omega in Memphis and kind of where is the headquarters and what do y'all do out of the headquarters? I'm so glad you asked me that because I think many people think we are singing songs and baking cookies in there. Right. But we are located in the South Wing complex right there by FedEx headquarters. Okay. And um, you know, we, the truth is our um, collegiate chapters, all 181 of them, uh, are locally managed and governed by the officers that are elected by the chapter. But our office, the executive headquarters, mm -hmm. likes to help them out by pooling our resources and providing some centralized services for them. So for example, we provide some membership education for them, leadership training, insurance, those types of things. We also give them some online tools to help them do their jobs better. We have an online member recommendation system and then also some dashboard tools for those officers to do their job better and more effectively and more efficiently. So kind of like your local Starbucks that you right. visit and interact with on an everyday or regular basis, uh, they have a national organization that provides strategy and training and those types of things for their employees, we operate in the exact same way. So if I understand this correctly, it's kind of like you're the corporate headquarters exactly. and all these others are almost like franchises. Exactly. Or, and each one is run independently, mm -hmm. but they're run by these young women. Yes. Um, which are 
obviously taking on huge leadership roles mm -hmm. because a chapter might range in size from what to what? Yeah, our average chapter size is 146, but we have some, you know, under 20 and some over 500. It's bigger than a high school yes. in many cases. It is a full-time job for many of those women and I think it looks great on your resume. I mean, you're running a company and not a small one. That's incredible. Mm -hmm. and, and not to say that an 18, 19, 20, 21 year old is not an adult because they are young women, but do they get any direction from more senior women, um, local people that maybe kind of jump in and say, hey, you're not on your own, we're out here to help you? Because yes. obviously they're trying to balance school and running these organizations. Yes, so that's the beauty of Chi Omega is that it's intergenerational. So in addition to having some peer-to-peer -peer training uh, where the outgoing chapter president will train, or train the new incoming chapter president, we also have alumna chapter advisors, so grown-ups in the community who volunteer their time to provide guidance wisdom and some common sense um, to help guide them, not make decisions for them, but give them um, some perspective right. on things. Well, that's interesting. Mm -hmm. So let me kind of jump back and, you know, obviously things have changed since mm -hmm. I was there. So I'm asking you a lot of questions sure. because it's, it's very new to me because the world is so different. Um, you mentioned they're involved in philanthropic organizations, mm -hmm. and I know Chi Omega, and a lot of people refer to it as Chi O for short, right. um, is not unlike all the others that are out there, which all are just incredible, incredible organizations, mm -hmm. both for women and for men. But you mentioned your philanthropic organization, and I think it's a really neat one. So c tell us about that, and how did y'all get involved in that? Well. Uh, it was a big, big decision for Chi Omega. This happened uh, a little over a decade ago, and uh, historically, Chi Omega had been focused on supporting whatever philanthropic organization meant something to the local chapter, uh, something to their community where they could really dig in. This is not donating money, this is volunteering hours. Uh, but then we decided that like many of our peers in the industry, other sororities and fraternities, we might go with a national film, uh, philanthropy. And we considered many organizations, including St. Jude here in Memphis, mm -hmm. uh, but ultimately chose Make-A-Wish, the Make-A-Wish Foundation, uh, as our national philanthropy. And chapters now can support Make-A-Wish by volunteering, um, but they can also choose to support a local charity as well. Oh, that's wonderful. Yeah. That's wonderful. So kind of backing up just a little bit, mm -hmm. um, we talk about fraternities mm -hmm. and then we talk about sororities, yes. but sometimes we talk about sororities as fraternities. So can we get back and just kind of define what is a sorority, what is a fraternity, and what does it actually mean? Yes. I get this question a lot because Chi Omega refers to ourselves as a fraternity, mm -hmm. but we are a sorority. So why okay. is that? Uh, the truth is Chi Omega was founded in 1895 before the word sorority was a thing. Okay. So the word did not exist in 1895. So the sororities that were formed in those years called themselves fraternities. Then when the, coined, when the term sorority was coined, uh, some of us decided we still wanted to remain fraternities kind of as uh, honor to our heritage. So we have remained a fraternity, but we are an all women's organization. Okay, yeah. well that's great. So typically sorority is referring to girls, fraternity mm -hmm. is referring to boys, but right. you were founded as a fraternity, so you've retained that. Yes, to try not to confuse people, we will say women's fraternity. Okay, that makes yeah. total sense. Yeah. Well, I've got a lot of questions. We're gonna pause for a short break and then okay. we're gonna continue this discussion. Great. Art is really an expression of the self. If you look at a piece of art, you can see the artist within it. All just really depends on what I feel like doing at the time. I generally have different ideas every day. I really get excited when my students come up to me with unique ideas that I've not heard of. You can't let everybody tell you who you are or what your art is or how to be what you want to be. I really let the students go according to how they're progressing and I try to give them as much as they're able to handle. Well I like drawing a lot and I like painting and I like being able to um, improve my skill and show people my art. I try to get them to think creatively. I think that's one of the few things that we as teachers really need to try to push with our students. I can't sing. I can't act either. 
but I can do art. So that's why I chose art. For more information about the Kappa program, visit ghskappa.com or call 755-7775. You're watching the award-winning GHS TV, a nationally recognized student television station. Welcome back to Let's Talk Business. If you're just tuning in, I am Kelly Bolton, and today we have Leslie Harrington, Executive Director of Chi Omega, as our guest. Today we've been discussing Chi Omega's mission and the tremendous impact it is making on its members and the community. Thanks for sticking around um, and we were talking um, about fraternity and sorority and I think we kind of clarified that which I really appreciate but I wanted to kind of dive in a little bit more about fraternities and sororities and what do they do I understand that Chi Omega is trying to create leaders and teaching skills and friendships and giving back to the community but is that unique to Chi Omega or are other organizations doing something similar um, in both the fraternal side and the sorority side and I guess uh, as we discuss that you are a fraternity? Yeah. No, I'd say there are many organizations doing wonderful things, mm -hmm. certainly. Uh, I'm a little biased towards uh, the sorority movement. Mm -hmm. It is not for everyone, but right. I believe in the sorority experience. Um, I think that especially today it is more relevant than ever as a matter of fact, because we live in an age where teenagers are kind of living out their lives completely on their cell phones. And so sorority teaches you things that I don't think our adolescents are really getting much anymore in high school. You learn things like how to have a face-to-face -face meaningful conversation outside mm -hmm. of your phone. You um, learn how to be a true friend. And it's different in college because, you know, now we are caring for our friends like we did in high school. But there's no parental oversight in college, or very little. And so you also, in order to be a good friend, have to be able to call out your friends when their behavior is not like themselves. Mm -hmm. And that used to be a parental role, now it's a friend role. And sororities make a big university small, make it feel more like home, um, in addition to all these activities that we've talked about. And it's a great laboratory for trying out and figuring out your personal leadership style. Uh, you get countless leadership opportunities in the four-year experience, and it's a great place, a safe place, to try these things out and fail even before you get to the workplace. And that's something you don't really learn in the classroom. So bigger than that and all the activities, uh, Chi Omega and sorority in general is a robust, or robust network of connections. So nationwide, we have uh, shown women how to find roommates or bridesmaids or uh, how to network and get internships and lifelong friends, and you can do that no matter where you go with Chi Omega. So where does that leadership come in? Mm -hmm. if, if it's being run on a local level by these young women, mm -hmm. it, from a national level at the, at, the, uh, at the house, at the home office, if you will, mm -hmm. are y'all providing that type of leadership skills for these young women through training programs and that sort of thing? Yes. So most of it, I will say, is learned day to day through trying to lead a big group of women um, through a year's worth of schedule and calendar and keeping everybody accountable to rules and policies and uh, expectations. But the National Office for Chi Omega does have a program called the Nancy Walton Laurie Leadership of Institute of Chi Omega. And that is a program tailored for both collegians and alumni uh, to really hone leadership styles. And they have various curriculum that talk about things from work-life balance to being a resilient leader and how important that is. Oh, that's uh, fabulous. Yeah, so it's and then program. do you do things collectively with other Greek organizations, both uh, male and female? Mm -hmm. We oftentimes partner on campus uh, and we try to support their activities as well as ours. So we have a lot of pairings uh, in terms of activities on campus. Well, that's great. Yeah. So what would you say if you were trying to talk with a young woman mm -hmm. um, that's trying to decide should they participate in Sorority Rush, mm -hmm. which I will need you to explain what Sorority Rush is, yes. whether they should participate in Sorority Rush or whether they should choose not to. Yeah. Well, I think there's no downside to participating. And maybe you could explain what Rush is. Sure. How about I back up? Yeah. 
That would be so, great. Yeah. I know I jumped right in and I thought maybe a lot of people don't know what sorority rush is. That's fine. Uh, most people have heard of sorority rush, might not know what it means. They have actually changed the term now to sorority recruitment because okay. rush is seen as a derogatory term now. Um, historically, it meant that women in 1895 were rushing to the train station to meet the new women coming to college. So it started off as a really nice term, but I think over the years people have found it to be derogatory. So we call it sorority recruitment now, and that's what it is. We are recruiting members to our organization. Um, and I would encourage every young woman who is looking for a niche in college to uh, at least sign up you know, take part, at least in a couple days. You can always drop out of recruitment, uh, but it gives you a really good perspective on each and every organization. You get to visit each of them at least once and meet the women and decide, is it for you or not? Well, that's a good, that's good advice. Yeah. And is there anything young women should do if, if they like what they're hearing you say, that they like the idea of being involved, making friends, developing leadership skills, um, and they decide they'd like to go out for recruitment, and mm -hmm. obviously when I called it Rush, I dated myself again, but um, what do they do to prepare for that? If they decide they would like to see what this sorority fraternity life is all about? Well, there are lots of misconceptions about how you prepare. I mean, I think there are lots of rumors out there that you need to send a, you know, a life-size cutout of yourself to the chapter or something mm -hmm. like that to really make yourself known. That's not true. Uh, what women need to do is to contact their university and the office on that campus that's in charge of sorority recruitment is typically called the Panhellenic Office mm -hmm. or the Fraternity and Sorority Life Office. And they will give you instructions on how to register for the process. And then each organization usually requires a letter of recommendation. And so you'll need to use your network in your community to find members, and they're out there, uh, at your church or at your parents' place of business or wherever, uh, who might be members of those organizations and ask them to write you a recommendation. Uh, and you don't have to have all of them, but a nice um, showing would be very helpful. And then you just be yourself mm -hmm. uh, and have conversations like you and I are having and um, everything will work out. The process is such that if you participate and play by the rules, you will be placed somewhere. And then you talked about this letter of recommendation, or I've heard people refer to it as a riff. Yes. Um, and then I've heard people refer to things about letters mm -hmm. and needing eight or nine letters and five or six recommendations or riffs. What is it that you really need if you're in to to be looked at by multiple organizations. Because obviously if you're going through, you don't ever want to go through one-sided. Although Chi Omega is a fabulous organization, you don't want to go in saying, that's what I want to be and I'm getting a letter for that and that's it. Right, right. It's really wise to uh, contact those organizations or contact those alumna members in your mm -hmm. community who are members of that organization and find out what their process is. We all tend to differ a little bit. For Chi Omega, uh, we do require a, uh, we call it a RIF, it's a Recruitment Information Form, that's mm -hmm. the acronym for it. And uh, I usually suggest that that is enough, unless you have multiple people that wanna write you a RIF, uh, then they can send a letter in addition. Or sometimes if you're the mother of a child going through recruitment, mm -hmm. you probably don't wanna be the official RIF writer, but you might submit a letter. Oh, that's nice mm -hmm. to know a, a parent can do that on behalf of that's their right. children. Yeah. We're going to pause for another short break, and when we return, we'll finish up our informative and enlightening discussion. We're running a 24-hour broadcast television station like no other school has done. It is student-run, it is student-produced, it is student-written, and it is student-directed. Here's to another 35 more years. Students here get immersed in lots of different types of shows so that when they go out into the real world or to college, if this is what they want to pursue, they are so prepared. Those lessons have also affected me in the ways that I would never even imagine. It has shown me to be different and to, you know, not settle for mediocrity. When you're producing a show, you want your show to be the best one it can be. You want it to be, you know, a show to remember, a show that you want to look back on and say, I did that. Yes, I did do this. Did I believe that I could do this? No, 
but because of all the support that I gained, I know that I can actually get this done. I know that the skills I've learned here is something I'm never going to forget, and same with the experiences here. From all of us here at GHS-TV, have a great day. For more information about the Kappa program, visit GHSKappa.com or call 755-7775. You're watching the award-winning GHS TV, a nationally recognized student television station. Thank you for joining us on Let's Talk Business. If you're just tuning in, I'm Kelly Bolton, and today we've been joined by Leslie Harrington, Executive Director of Chi Omega, and we've been discussing the historic contributions and future endeavors of this organization. Well, Leslie, right before we took a break, we were talking about the idea of if a young woman is listening and they would like to participate in a recruitment process at a school they're going to, if they happen to have um, fraternities and sororities, that they would contact the Panhellenic office, find out maybe the names in the process there, get letters of recommendation or RIFs, as mm -hmm. you were referring to, and if there's a, a family member, a mother, or a friend that just says, I think you're precious and you would make a great part of XYZ, then you can get them to send you a letter. But That's right. no need for life-size cutouts of yourself being sent. Um, you know, there there is so much um, mystery around this process. It's almost like what happens behind the, these, the doors of these organizations is so mysterious. And I think for young women, it makes it almost a paralyzing fear mm -hmm. to enter it. So therefore, I wonder, having been a part of it and been such a, a thing that was so near and dear to my heart, I fear that some women are scared away because the process is so daunting that yeah. it might make them fear joining or the fear of not getting the one that they have their heart set on being a part of, not going in with this open mind that there's so many wonderful young women or young men out there that they could participate with. Right, right. Well, I do not disagree that the process can seem intimidating and daunting at times. Mm -hmm. And it is a hectic, fast-paced couple of days, no doubt, but it is fun. Everyone is very nice, and uh, there are presentations and videos that are entertaining, and you learn so much about the organizations, and you meet people, even if you decide not to join or uh, you you know decide to uh, take part in the process but didn't even think that you would, you meet all kinds of people during the process. So it's worthwhile, I think, no matter what happens. I think that's wonderful. Mm -hmm. And can you share with us maybe um, a story or two um, of a young woman who is now a, a, a leader, we talk about future leaders, mm -hmm. but some of them are leaders today mm -hmm. that maybe started out as a Chi Omega. Yes. Well, we have many Chi Omega leaders, and since I went to the University of Tennessee, Knoxville, mm -hmm. I probably most like to refer to uh, Pat Head Summit. Yes. She was a Chi Omega, not at Tennessee, mm -hmm. uh, but at UT Martin, and uh, that is the leadership that we all aspire to have and the type of woman we all aspire to be, and she really exempl exemplifies the ideals of Chi Omega and our values. That's wonderful. Yeah. Well, can you speak at all? I don't expect you to be an expert, mm -hmm. but I know that we do have male viewers. And mm -hmm. it, what really is the difference in the female side and the male side? I guess the female side, it's all women. Mm -hmm. And for the male side, it's all men. But there, there seems to be kind of a, a relatively big difference in the two to some degree. And mm -hmm. maybe it's much more similar than I thought. Well, I... I find it very different. Mm -hmm. uh, they are my peers in the industry mm -hmm. and we spend lots of time together at conferences and mm -hmm. various meetings. Uh, and we talk about our Mars and Venus differences, mm -hmm. if you will. Um, all in all, we are um, the same type of organization, fraternal organizations, and uh, when sorority and fraternity are done right, we are doing a lot of good in this world. Uh, we do operate differently in that uh, we have different rules and policies when it comes to um, event planning and insurance and things like that. Uh, but for the most part, we are doing the same type of good. That's wonderful. And we really value the single sex experience and, and being with um, 
all girls. We think there's value in that and being with all men um, at certain safe spaces on campus. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I know some campuses don't have fraternal organizations. That's right. And is there a reason that some do and some do not? So it's probably because the enrollment uh, does not justify or validate the presence of fraternities and sororities. Uh, and sometimes the university um, might not want that on their campus. Uh, so more and more uh, universities uh, we see are requesting uh, applications to join their campus and that's wonderful to see and our membership numbers are on the rise. So um, I think uh, it is something that necessarily um, you don't have to be a part of. Mm -hmm. uh, there are many other organizations on campuses that um, serve the same need. Uh, but I certainly uh, would hope that my daughters go to a university where there is fraternity and sorority life. And what is the difference in, you know, Greek life, as people call it, I, coming from the Greek letters, um, sorority fraternity, but there's other Greek organizations that are not your typical sorority fraternity. You see some Greek lettered organizations. Are they the same or are they different? Well, alphabet soup, right? Yes. Uh, Greek letter organizations um, exist uh, for social sororities and fraternities, academic, all types of uh, different fraternal organizations have Greek letters. They don't necessarily mean your traditional sorority and fraternity, engineering fraternities, those types of things too. So, so. there is a difference in an academic fraternity and would you call Chi Omega a social fraternity? Mm -hmm. Okay. I would. Even though it's not really just for social purposes. That's right. We do other things, but that's our core competency is friendship. That's good. Mm -hmm. That's great. Well, what's next for Chi Omega? Oh my goodness. Lots. Lots. We are so excited about, um, we have a big birthday coming up in 2020. We are going to be 125 years old. Now, I'm not 125. I said I, I would date myself, but I'm not there. <laughs> well, I know what you're thinking. I mean, we don't look a day over 115, yeah, exactly, right? Exactly, right. Um, but we um, have a special place in our hearts for Memphis, not just because our executive mm -hmm. headquarters is here, but because in the year 1900, five years after we were founded, uh, Chi Omega held its first ever national convention in Memphis at the Peabody Hotel. Really? So we're just I feeling, did not realize yes, that. Yes. So we're feeling super nostalgic about bringing everybody back in 2020 for this big significant milestone. Can't wait. Oh, that's fabulous. Yeah, that's yeah. fabulous. Well, is there anything else? We've got maybe about a minute more before we're going to have to end our show. Is there anything else that you want to tell our viewers um, that we have not discussed? I don't think so. We've covered it all. Yeah. Well, I guess then I will I will end it and wrap it up that I am so appreciative that you came. Okay. And it's so much fun for me to kind of step back into memory lane. I'll have to get in touch with my old sorority sisters. I hope you do. And um, tell them that you were on the show, which is really neat. Wonderful. So I do appreciate it. Thank you for having me. Once again, I'd like to thank Leslie with Chi Omega for being with us today. We hope you've enjoyed tuning in. To get more information about our show, you can check us out on the web at ghstv.org, where we're streaming live 24 hours a day. You can also check us out on Facebook and Twitter. Please join us again next month on Let's Talk Business as we continue to explore the thriving Memphis business community and civic community.